It's about, eh, I'd say 20 degrees warmer than it was yesterday. Right now it's about 40. Yesterday when I got outside, it was about 20. Same time too, so about 20 degrees warmer, which is exciting because today is my very long day of not enjoyable stuff. I have uh, literary criticism. I hate that class. I don't like the professor. It's a whole thing. Um, basically, like, I think she teaches badly and it's a whole thing. And then I have a two hour break and then I have intro to education, which is a fun class. That's a super fun class. I like that class. It's just, it's three hours long. And anytime you have a three hour long class, you get the same thing. And it's just like, come on, can we go home yet? And of course, you know, Three hours isn't really that long. It's 180 minutes. And it's the same amount of time you're in all your other classes every week. It's just all at once. You just get flustered and stuff. Um, usually get home pretty late, too. Because that class runs from 4 to 7. And, yeah, it takes a while to get home. Which is fine. You know, it's no big deal. But the problem is it's so freaking cold lately that it gets to the point where I'm frustrated about it being cold. Obviously, I wear my winter coat and everything. But when you when you don't want to be cold, you get flustered. And it's, it's not fun at all. Um, today, we have two guest speakers in that second class. So that's fun. Uh, spring break starts Friday for me. So I'm off from Friday all the way through to the, the 23rd. Fifth, yeah, the 24th, 25th um, is the first day back, which I have a big project due on the 26th, so I'll probably just bust that whole thing out on um, Friday night, a Thursday night, Friday morning, maybe over the weekend. I don't know. I don't know, but it'll get done way before spring break is over, so I'm not worried about it. It's just big, and I'm like 50% done anyway, so if I can get the other 50% done over spring, over, or over before spring break starts out a much less stressful spring break. Uh, but yeah, that's exciting. Not a fan of having the long day, but I have two long days every week. I have today and Thursday, but Thursday is more fun for me because it's because my club meets at 7.30 p.m. and like we play games and I've been playing Pathfinder. Uh, I finally, finally got my first kill in the game last session. Um, I'm playing an elf healer, and so obviously most of my spells and stuff are, you know, defensive and healing. And we were fighting a skeleton. Heal damages the undead. So I cast heal, and I, I killed the thing, and it was just amazing. I loved it. It was perfect. It was one of the best things ever. I loved it. Um, but yeah. Uh, especially because the skeleton was right there about to just attack me and it just disintegrated. <laughs> just, I love playing TTRPGs because they're so much fun. You get to learn a lot about people and a lot about, like, things. It's so cool. Today just genuinely feels like a weird day. Checking to see if I can cross the street safely and I can. So well, that's good. But it just feels like one of those days where, like, I have no energy, no motivation. I have stuff to do. I'm going to go to class and I'm just going to like sit there and listen. But it, it doesn't feel like a normal day and I don't like that. Uh, so I've just left my literary criticism class and the professor handed back the exams we took. Got a 79% on it, which when I'm teaching, my belief is that... 79 is an 80, an 89 is a 90, a 99 is a 100. <laughs> just because, like, it just seems fair if you get that close to just bump it up. And then that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people wouldn't do that, but that's fine. It was a C plus. And honestly, I'm only shooting for a C in the class because, like, I don't care about it. I'm only taking, I, I just need to get a C in it because it's a content area course. Um, it's, uh, very dense and boring and dull and has, like, really, it's not anything good for what I want to do. I don't know why we have to take it, but 
You gotta take it. You gotta do what you gotta do. Um, actually, it was a few minutes ago. I actually went to an office after to go and talk about some um, some plans that I have for the future that are uh, in the works that hopefully I can get taken care of in the next couple of weeks. I have to go to another office on um, Thursday. Talk to them. <laughs> Got a two-hour break. I'm going to have some lunch in a little bit. Fairly certain today is the day that my friend is having surgery. Um, so I've been, like, you know, nervous all day. Even though I know they'll be fine, but... <laughs> you know how it is. Then I have to have surgery in a couple of months. A couple of weeks to a couple of months, depending on... Um, Thursday, I'm making the phone call. i got to have some dental surgery. Um, kind of nervous about it, but I'm working on my heart health, my physical health, my weight, all that, to hopefully make myself um, less risky for surgery. Although my doctor did say that my only risk factor right now is that I'm overweight, which is fine. I'm working on weight loss anyway. I, I lost 40 pounds since I quit drinking last year, and that was without actively trying to lose weight. So this year I'm actually trying to lose weight, so that's kind of cool. I weigh myself once a week on, usually on Friday, so I'm not on Friday. Um, there was an essay that was due in the class the other day. I finished it. It wasn't a bad essay. Um, honestly, it's worth 10%, so the exam was worth 10%, so 79 on that is, you know, it's worth 1,000, so, so 7.9 out of 100 points, so cool. So I only need... Um, 70 out of 100 points, so... seven a 100 minus 7.9, is, or 70 out of 7.9 is, is not bad. Plus, some of it is informal writing that's just graded for completion, plus there's participation. It's very likely I'll get a C in the class, if not a C plus. Um, which a C plus is fine, too. My, my friend was telling me about that they were really proud of me for, um being like okay with getting a C and not like super upset and disappointed in myself. I failed classes before, specifically my seventh grade science class, which I failed on purpose. I, I actually once got a 99.74% overall grade in um, a college class, a computers class, and at I was trying so hard to get 100. I got one question wrong on one quiz throughout the whole semester. And at the end of the semester, I asked the professor to round it up. And she said, Sammy, I heard, you, I heard you're disappointed in your grade. Why don't you take a look? So I opened up Blackboard and freaking she dropped into a negative 10 billion. It's, I was like, no, no, you need to reinstate the grade before or something like that. It was, yeah. I was just like, no, I was so upset. She fixed it. I ended up with an A in the course. Totally fine. Um, but the lesson she was teaching me was you don't have to be perfect for somebody to be proud of you, which she did say she was proud of me afterwards when we were talking, which fine, but that was a very interesting way to get that lesson, especially as a 27 year old college student. Um, because like, yeah, that was, that was fun uh, to think about. I don't know what the, um, <laughs> what I would have done if she hadn't given me that lesson in terms of like if I had gotten that C plus today and it's like, yeah, I did my best, I did what I could. I don't like the class. I focus heavily on my other classes because they're more important to me. <laughs> it's, it's literary criticism. I've been a literary theorist and critic for years. There are, there are certain theories that I don't believe in, like psychoanalytical theory. I don't believe we should be studying a guy who did a bunch of cocaine. So I have a ton of haters, and I think it's absolutely hilarious because of the reason for a lot of it. A lot of it is people with their own insecurities. People get upset when they see a fat person or a trans person or a disabled person being successful on the internet. But people will also get upset because when they think, they think anybody can do this, which is not true. Even I sometimes struggle to do things with the way I want to do them, simply due to the fact that while being a full-time college student, it's difficult to actually always keep up with content. I've started vlogging because I like that's a good way to throw out a 10 to 20 minute YouTube video every day. Plus I'm doing my sports predictions every day and all that. But I also have a ton of fans and yeah, I've got 66,200 followers on TikTok, which is a 
not a big number, but I believe only two people from where I'm from have more followers than me on here. Um, and actually, it might be one, because I think one of them actually either deleted their account or was banned. Um, I may be wrong about this, uh, but it's interesting to see that. Now, a mutual of mine, who I will send this video to but not tag, asked me how I deal with it. And then one of the ways I deal with it is by ignoring it completely. Another way is I have so many filters set up, and I'm just like, yeah. These people, it's a projection of what their issues are, not mine. Um, but also, I have been a hater in the past. Uh, for example, my uh, professor for my, um, what course was it? Uh, ethnically, diverse American, uh, ethnically Diverse Literature course last year. I'm absolutely a hater of her. Um, but that's because she, she kind of broke the law and did a whole bunch of other things, which was a bit ridiculous, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I don't let it consume me. I, I've thought about it and I'm like, what if I just go through her dissertation and publish something in rebuttal to it? But that would also be useful because I could be an undergrad who's published something. Uh, I'm gonna be doing that potentially, but I'm meeting with a librarian on um, after spring break to expand the essay I wrote on my Chaucer final exam. But the other interesting thing is a lot of people just want to get a reaction. And if you just don't give them a reaction, delete the comments, or even just ignore them completely. Now, you are I do believe that you're responsible for your comment section. If someone's spreading misinformation, like saying things like LDL cholesterol doesn't cause atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in your comments, it's your job to either call that out or delete it, because that's wrong. <laughs> LDL cholesterol is the number one indicator of that. But I also believe that just ignoring it is sometimes the best thing to do. Because when you ignore it, you're not giving them the attention. Now, I do want to state this, though. If you are an educator and you have a student that is doing a behavior that you wish for them to stop and you ignore them, it's going to do more harm than good for someone in that age group. That comes from applied behavioral analysis, which is wrong to be used on students, but people do it. What you should do is just talk to the student, figure it out, and go from there. But it actually works in the online spaces, especially because you have no obligation to interact with anybody online. You have no, ob I have no obligation to interact with anybody. I have mutuals. I don't interact with them all the time. I try to. I have people who comment all the time. I try to interact with the people who are, you know, respectful and stuff, but I don't have an obligation to. Like, if they were to get upset because I stopped interacting with them, it's not my problem. Um, but yeah. So, one of the reasons I'm not yet monetized on YouTube is because I've been using it incorrectly. I started my YouTube in September of 2021. Uh, when I had, I was in the midst of having a nearly 70 million view year on TikTok. And I was like, let's move my audience over to YouTube. Now, the thing about that is, uh, when you move from one platform to another, you might get 10% of your audience to 20% of your audience, depending. Audiences are different, plus people already watch your content. Um, I was publishing everything that I published on TikTok on YouTube for a little while as a short, which wasn't a good idea. I still do do that sometimes. Sometimes something's too good not to go everywhere, which my um, sports predictions go here and on TikTok every day because, like, why wouldn't they? They're over a minute long, so they count towards the watch time. So uh, if 60 people watch them to the end, that adds one hour of watch time. Obviously, I don't get 60 views on a video every day. It happens sometimes. I've gotten thousands of views on some videos, and I've gotten hundreds on others. My most viewed video is a short with 69,000. My most viewed video on TikTok has 3.8 million, and it was me being wrong about math in the most funny way. I said that 0. 0.5 times 0. 0.5 equals 2.5. I know it equals 0. 0.25, but I was just being a fool to get reactions. That was during the 68 million year, uh, view year. Um, since 2020, well, since 2020, I've gotten about 170 million views across everything, which is a lot. Um, to think of, when you think about that, it's over four, over 35 million a year. Because this year, 
technically year five. 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 2024. It's the fifth year, so anytime I average, I'm using five instead of four. And obviously, I could use four point, I think it's point eight threes per month, I think. I think, I think it's 0.083. I don't know for months, but I, I don't know the actual math off the top of my head. I'm thinking about it. So right now I'm on my break in between classes. This is a two hour break. Um, what I did was I went to that office that I needed to go to that had some lunch. Now I'm sitting here and probably just enjoying the sun, probably for another like half hour. It's really nice weather out this, this evening or this afternoon. This evening's not supposed to be too great. Tomorrow's gonna be all right, but tomorrow I got therapy and a three hour class and then, yeah. Uh, and then Thursday, I don't know what I'm doing. Thursday I have two meetings, so that's fine. Thursday I'll be here early for the two meetings and then obviously my club meeting at 7.30, which we're about to go into combat in Pathfinder. We're fighting a necromancer and an unknown being, which is, uh, Kind of exciting. I, I'm playing an oracle elf bartender, <laughs> which is great. I have a elf cosplay for later. I'm super excited about that. Uh, not gonna wear that till after my birthday. By the way, the eclipse is on my birthday. I'm thinking about doing like a long video on the eclipse. It really depends on what I can do with the eclipse from my yard. Um, gotta talk because my whole family is gonna be together that day. All, all of us. Uh, all four of us, possibly even even the extended family, will be together. And I don't have class that day. The professors quietly are canceling classes. The other university over here already canceled classes, but that's fine. We didn't have to. We just quietly canceled classes. And then there's like, my class is controversial bio, and they're like, uh, just uh, read this article about how not to go blind when you uh, look at the eclipse. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's our homework for that day. And then like, write it down. And if you go blind looking at the eclipse, you get an F. Um, spring break starts on Monday. Well, Friday, but technically Monday. So I am probably gonna go ahead and take my happy ass down to the rental car place um, and do the Hertz rent Uber rental car program for a week. Try to make about eight, nine hundred bucks, maybe a thousand. It'll really depend. The plan is to just do a lot of driving, is to just basically treat it like a full-time 40-hour job that week, maybe even 50 or 60. Um, <laughs> build in some money. I need, um, what do I need? I need 400 for a phone, 150 for bus passes, and like 300 for a miscellaneous thing I'm doing later. So 400, 550, like 850, which that should be easy to get. Plus it's 313 to do it, plus a $200 refundable deposit that you get back when you return the car. Um, so 513 up front get it back, work that out. Um, so if I make 800, really, I get a thousand, you know, so, so I'd really need to make $1,100 that week to make 800. Then, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So we were talking about psychoanalytical criticism and literary criticism today, and that's my least favorite type of criticism. I can't stand Sigmund Freud anyway. Um, so Sigmund Freud was addicted to cocaine. Um, as was the guy who invented medical residency, but that's neither here nor there. So, what happened was, Sigmund Freud was addicted to cocaine and did a whole bunch of things and had issues and basically said everything's X, Y, Z and it's based on your relationship with your parents and blah, blah, blah. And most of the stuff he said is not scientifically sound. For some reason, uh, literary critics were like, let's take this unscientifically sound theory and start rolling with it, which is awful, because well, literary criticism has been since probably about the 60s and 70s, a much more scientific field than it used to be, where it's just like, yeah, you just say whatever you want to say about the book. I mean, now, like, you have to f provide evidence and textual evidence, peer review, all of that. Mm. For some reason, we just insist on keeping Freud, and I hate it. I hate it so much. He is literally the worst. I don't understand why. We're doing more psychoanalysis um, next uh, Thursday. 
Um, and then after spring break, we're reading Jekyll and Hyde, which obviously I'm going to assume the professor's going to want to psychoanalyze that, which there are psychological things in there. Um, if you've not read the story, I recommend the song um, Jekyll and Hyde by uh, Five Finger Death Punch. Really good song. Um, something with the Scarlet Letter. Recommend the song Scarlet Letters by Mudfane. Um, it doesn't give you the whole story, but it, it you get the basic idea. Plus, everybody knows the story of Jekyll and Hyde. Arthur did an episode of that. So, I already read the book. I'm kind of excited to see where things go. Um, with this, I don't think it'll go well, but I think it'll be interesting. Um, I think it'll be interesting. I'm only going for a C in the class. A C plus or a B would be nice, but... I got a C plus on the first exam, so 7.9 out of a hundred pa out of a hundred points so far because it was worth ten percent then there's another assignment that's worth ten percent which is um an essay which she's grading over spring break so hopefully i get like at least a 79 on that that would be another 7.9 well 7.9 plus 7.9 it's 14 plus 15.8 out of um 75 which would mean i'd only need 60 more points um which would be easy enough to get especially because there's participation in class writing activities and quizzes which is fine um so i'm not really too happy about this class it's the worst english class i've taken in years but i'm okay with it you gotta do what you gotta do and if you don't like it you don't like it um keep looking over to the left because there's geese and um i don't know if they necessarily like the fact that i'm here they probably don't they never do they don't like they don't they're always here they're always hanging around the city I'm not a fan of them they're not a fan of me but eh, you gotta do what you gotta do and what i gotta do here is not get attacked by geese uh tonight i might stream i might not it really depends on when i get home um, I did a half-hour NASCAR Heat 5 stream last night. Um, weren't many people there. Uh, I'm considering maybe making some, doing, doing a franchise mode in the show with the Mariners um, today, tonight. I don't know. It really depends on the mood. Because I don't know if I'll actually be able to get any sleep because i got to be up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. Um gonna be up at 5 a.m. and then my appointment's at 10:30, and I gotta get there at 9:45 because I gotta go to the pharmacy. It's a long day tomorrow, and then I gotta go from class from uh, one to four. <laughs> and I I submitted a video for the class the assignment and accidentally deleted it. So I've gotta refilm the video, <laughs> which is uh not good. Uh, but that's, you know, sometimes you fuck up and do shit like that. <laughs> so I have a ton of haters, and I think it's absolutely hilarious because of the reason for a lot of it. A lot of it is people with their own insecurities. People get upset when they see a fat person or a trans person or a disabled person being successful on the internet. But people will also get upset because when they think, they think anybody can do this, which is not true. Even I sometimes struggle to do things with the way I want to do them, simply due to the fact that while being a full-time college student, it's difficult to actually always keep up with content. I've started vlogging because I like that's a good way to throw out a 10 to 20 minute YouTube video every day. Plus I'm doing my sports predictions every day and all that. But I also have a ton of fans and yeah, I've got 66,200 followers on TikTok, which is a, not a big number, but I believe only two people from where I'm from have more followers than me on here. Um, and actually it might be one, because I think one of them actually either deleted their account or was banned. Um, I may be wrong about this, uh, but it's interesting to see that. Now, a mutual of mine who I will send this video to, but not tag, asked me how I deal with it. And then one of the ways I deal with it is by ignoring it completely. Another way is I have so many filters set up and I'm just like, yeah, these people, it's a projection of what their issues are, not mine. 
Um, but also, I have been a hater in the past. Uh, for example, my uh, professor for my um, what course was it? Uh, ethnically diverse American, uh, ethnically diverse literature course last year. I'm absolutely a hater of her. Um, but that's because she she kind of broke the law and did a whole bunch of other things, which was a bit ridiculous. But that's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I don't let it consume me. I I've thought about it, and I'm like, what if I just go through her dissertation and publish something in rebuttal to it? But that would also be useful because I could be an undergrad who's published something. Uh, I'm gonna be doing that potentially. But I'm meeting with a librarian on um, after spring break to expand the essay I wrote on my Chaucer final exam. But the other interesting thing is a lot of people just want to get a reaction. And if you just don't give them a reaction, delete the comments, or even just ignore them completely. Now, you are I do believe that you're responsible for your comment section. If someone's spreading misinformation, like saying things like LDL cholesterol doesn't cause atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in your comments, it's your job to either call that out or delete it, because that's wrong. LDL cholesterol is the number one indicator of that. But I also believe that just ignoring it is sometimes the best thing to do. Because when you ignore it, you're not giving them the attention. Now, I do want to state this, though. If you are an educator and you have a student that is doing a behavior that you wish for them to stop and you ignore them, it's going to do more harm than good for someone in that age group. That comes from applied behavioral analysis, which is wrong to be used on students, but people do it. What you should do is just talk to the student, figure it out, and go from there. But it actually works in the online spaces, especially because you have no obligation to interact with anybody online. You have no, ob I have no obligation to interact with anybody. I have mutuals. I don't interact with them all the time. I try to. I have people who comment all the time. I try to interact with the people who are, you know, respectful and stuff, but I don't have an obligation to. Like if they were to get upset because I stopped interacting with them, it's not my problem. Um, but yeah. Today just genuinely feels like a weird day. Checking to see if I can cross the street safely and I can't. So well, that's good. But it just feels like one of those days where like, I have no energy, no motivation. I have stuff to do. I'm gonna go to class and I'm just gonna like sit there and listen. But it, it doesn't feel like a normal day and I don't like that. Some a lot of people don't realize when they watch my content is that my videos are often satirical. I mean, I, I make videos that aren't, which is also what helps make great satires when you can't tell uh, if it is satire until after you've analyzed it critically. Um, which I find fascinating that there are so many people who just cannot critically analyze things and determine if something's satire. Even if they like go and look at other things that a person posts or does. Uh, now, I am an advocate for death of the author in some cases, but in the case where it's social media, I think death of the author makes absolutely no sense because the person is still a living, breathing person interacting with you. I'm not saying form a parasocial relationship with me, but, I want, uh, but what I am saying is engage critically with the people you follow me <laughs> because sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes you'll you'll do things like fall for Gary Brecka's 10x health scam um, and things like that. So I may be a humanities student, but I, I try to keep up on at least, you know, a little bit of health-related and medical literature, just not all of the time. Some t I follow a lot of med students, a dated one. It's a whole thing. Um, Plus, I once had to tell an endocrinologist that just because I'm fat doesn't mean I have diabetes and then showed them my recent blood work like three weeks prior with an A1C of 4.2. <laughs> Which, you know, not diabetes. You need 5.7 to even think about diabetes. <laughs> Which, whatever. Um, or uh, if you've seen the um, case study of the 29-year-old male that presented with AFib who... Um, 
had it reverted to sinus rhythm via digital rectal exam <laughs> that went viral on TikTok a couple weeks ago. I actually read that case study. It was interesting. They didn't just decide to give him a digital rectal exam. Uh, they, were, they were checking for rectal bleeding. <laughs> uh, but what I found yesterday was this guy who um, doesn't believe in LDL cholesterol being bad and went on the carnivore diet for 640 days, which is a long time, like a really long time for anything. I, I think the only, well, I've uploaded a video to TikTok every day since April 1st, 2020. So that's more than 640 days. I've uploaded at least one video every day since then. Um, but the guy was talking about his diet is basically all meat, high and saturated fat. And he doesn't believe in carbs. Now, carbohydrates, sugars, glucose, fructose, lactose, galactose, those things, monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides are all your body's preferred energy source. It all gets broken down into glucose anyway. Um, when it's a fat and then the insulin and everything. And when you eat things that aren't full of carbs, your blood sugar is still affected because that's just uh, how our body metabolizes things. But the man eats a ton of saturated fat. And he said his cholesterol is 380 plus for LDL only. And let's say he has normal HDL, which is um, greater than 45, uh, 40, greater than 40 or 45. So his total cholesterol is 400. Your total cholesterol is supposed to be 200 or fewer, which Dr. Allo has actually been saying that new research says it should be 150. <laughs> Even if it's 200, it's more than double. <laughs> and I'm just laughing at this guy like, what are you doing? Why are you having your cholesterol so high? I've watched a few of his videos. He really hates Dr. Allo. I follow Dr. Allo because I think he's really cool. He has a lot of good information uh, about stuff and things, especially with cholesterol. <laughs> but this man showed his coronary artery angiogram to get a calcium score, and it showed a blockage. Like, even I could see the blockage. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is so bad. Why do you continue going on this diet? And then I believe he called statins the devil. And I'm just so scared for the future of everyone, especially him. Every year I start the goal, start the year with the same goal, which is 52 million views, because that's a million views a week and about 142,000 a day, but the million a week is what's more important to me. Um, but I also have another goal ever since I started YouTube, which I did not reach in 21 obviously, since I started it in September, or 22, but I did reach last year in 23, which is 8,760 hours of watch time on just YouTube, because I, the TikTok, it's just way too complicated to try to figure it all out, and the reason for that is because that's exactly a year. It's 8,760. This year, there's 8,784 hours in a year, because it's a leap day, but... I think I can hit it this year, especially because I'm planning on making more long-form content. What I'm thinking about doing, now that I have CapCut, is actually doing an inning-by-inning -inning recap of Mariners games and just throwing it up online. I don't know. Unfortunately, it won't happen for opening day, as I'll be busy that day. Um, and I believe I'm actually getting a cavity filled on the 19th, which is the first day of the Korea series, so that's sad that I won't be able to watch that, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world.
We had a uh, couple of guest speakers in my intro to education class today, which was pretty cool. They're currently doing their student teaching experience, so they were talking about that. That was super cool to be able to um, see that and listen to them. <laughs> class got a little chaotic because they took about an hour, which, you know, fine. That was an important thing to do. Then we took our break. Then we came back, did a couple of... Um, activities related to the professor's um, experience teaching and student teaching and being a mentor teacher when she was in K-12, <coughs> which was pretty cool. <laughs> she told us a lot of stuff that was really interesting. Then we did a whole nother activity where we got to throw paper across the room, which is always exciting when you get to throw paper balls across the room. Uh, we got out of class early which was nice, so I'm home like an hour early, which is incredibly nice. It's one of the best feelings in the world to get home early. Um, just simply due to the fact you uh, had a long, I had a long day. I had a long day. That literary criticism exam getting handed back and the professor didn't put the grade in Brightspace, so I'm gonna keep it to make sure that it gets in properly. I don't trust this woman. She doesn't believe Shakespeare exists. So like, how can I trust this woman as an English professor? <laughs> my, uh, my Fitbit just uh, buzzed. I've hit 10,000 steps. Uh, so that's nice. I still gotta increase my stamina a bit, but I'm working on it. So I I've been thinking about some of my goals. Um, Obviously, like I just said in the last little clip, I got to um, increase my stamina. Part of it, part of it is that I have low iron anemia. So what that means is my body doesn't have as much hemoglobin, which hemoglobin is the molecule that carries oxygen around your blood uh, as it should. I also have a slightly low red blood cell count meaning that I don't have enough hemoglobin and I don't have enough red blood cells, but that's been steadily improving since I started iron supplementation under the supervision of my doctor. <clears throat> uh, but that's cool. And in the process of that, I've actually been becoming more active, which is helping with the stamina, helping with the red blood cells, helping with the iron and helping with weight loss a little bit. Cause yeah, I know it's mostly diet, but I went from sedentary to actually doing stuff, which helped. Another goal is to do well in all of my classes. Uh, I have an A in every class except one at midterm where I have a C plus. So, and the C plus is literary criticism, so I don't care about that one. So all my other classes having an A is great. Uh, what else was I saying? And the other goal is to get monetized on YouTube which I am at 759 hours of watch time. So this video is like 40 minutes long, 40, 45 minutes long. I don't know yet. If one person watches it for the whole way through, that's three quarters of an hour, which who knows that might happen. That might not. It's a vlog. I'm me. You never know. <laughs> uh, but I need 4,000 hours in order to start earning from like ads or 10 million shorts views, which 10 million shorts views in 90 days with 3,800 followers, probably not happening. Anyway, uh, glad for coming. Thanks for coming along for the day.